Today we're gonna to be talking about retouching teeth in Photoshop and when it comes to retouching teeth, two things need to be kept in mind. Number one, shaping and number two, coloring and that's all there is. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and follow along using this photo, make sure to go ahead and download it using the links in the description. Alright, if you look at her teeth, it needs a little bit of shaping. So how do we correct that? Liquify, as you guessed it right. Again, two things, shaping and coloring. First, shape it. So first of all, press Ctrl or Command J. Make a copy of the background layer. You don't want to do it in the background layer, okay? Ctrl or Command J. Next. There are two approaches to applying liquify. You can convert this into a smart object and if you do that, you will be able to change the values later or you can directly do it. If you directly do it, you can also select the rectangular marquee tool and select this area, just this area and open up liquify filter, liquify. Now what is the advantage of this? It opens up just that area. Apart from that, it is faster. It is much faster than applying it to the whole image. So that's the advantage, but if you do convert it into a smart object, you won't be able to do it. All right, you will be able to do it, but it's a different way. All right, let's convert this into a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters, click OK. And then if you select the rectangular marquee tool, go to filter, liquify, it opens up the whole photo, but you can actually just edit just that area. But the advantage is you can change the values after the fact. And if for you the advantages far overrides the disadvantages, please go for it and convert it into a smart object. All right, let's go ahead and cancel that. And we don't need it. Let's directly go to filter and then liquify. And then let's zoom in and just play with the teeth and correct it. Okay. Now, once zoomed in, select the forward warp tool, okay? This is the forward warp tool, the shortcut to which is W. And slowly nudge it. Don't make big moves like that. Slowly, very slowly nudge it. Make sure you make the brush of the size of the thing that you want to move. Got it? Make the brush of the size of the thing that you want to affect or move. Okay, so in this case, as you can see, if we zoom in, uh, we need to get this right, okay? So this is... The shape is not right over there. This shape is a little, eh, it's, it's, we need to correct that. So first of all, let's start with this area. So this is a very tiny thing over there, which needs to be corrected. So we'll decrease the size of that brush to that and make sure the pressure is low. So how to increase or decrease the pressure, hold the alt or option, drag it up to decrease it, drag it down to increase it. As I do that, have a look at the slider. If I drag it up, it decreases. If I drag it down, it increases. So keep it somewhere around 30-ish and slowly nudge it and correct that. Done. Very simply. Make it a little bigger and nudge it and correct that. And that is taken care of. And make this teeth the size of this one, okay? So just simply correct that and that looks perfectly fine. Here is a little bit of discrepancy. We need to just make it straight over there and that looks nice. This one, we need to correct it. Okay. We shall take it a little inside like that. That looks okay. And when we look at these two teeth, they are a little different in shape and nobody has got perfect teeth. So we need to correct it just a little bit, but not so much. Okay. So we have to take it a little up. like so and make sure you do not destroy the construction of the lip okay and you gotta pull this a little down make the brush a little bigger always remember make the brush of the size of the thing that you want to move all right so now the size of the teeth this one is a little small i mean a little narrow so we'll make it a little wide like that and this one is a little short so we'll make it a little tall bring it in line with this one make sure to not affect the lip so much okay so that's pretty much done i guess if i go ahead and zoom out and have a look at the before and after so this is the before this is the after just a little bit of correction so we can also go ahead and do more corrections if you want to maybe straighten it all up and straighten this all up and 
There's no end to it. Watch. If you do it too much, have a look. This doesn't look right. So if you have done something extra, you don't like it, select the reconstruction tool. Okay, select it and then paint on that particular area that will reconstruct that for you as it was before. Increase the pressure and let's reconstruct that. Let's come back to forward warp tool and let's shape it properly. Put it in this one. All right, now once you're satisfied with this, I think there's a little bit of problem over here. It doesn't look right over there. So we'll just fix it right like that. Okay, and push it a little inside. Push this a little in. Okay, now have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. Check off the preview and this is the after. Looks straight, looks nice. You can just always make more adjustments if you want to and bring it, bring everything in line, like totally perfect. And once you have done all of that, I insist you, I implore you that you do this. Drag down and there's a button over there called reconstruct. Sometimes we go a little overboard. So click on reconstruct. When the amount is at 100, this is all you did. Liquify to the maximum. When the amount is zero, it reverts back to its original shape. So it's like undo on a slider, okay? total undo of everything that you have done. So you can always reduce it if you think you have done so much. So we can reduce it if we want to, but I think for us 100 is fine, but you can always try the slider before hitting OK. All right, hit OK, hit OK again and finalize on this one. Mind you, this is a smart object. If you want to change anything at any point of time later, you can always go ahead and double click on liquify and change that as well. Okay, just like that and change these values. Hit cancel and that's pretty much fine. Now it's time for us to color it right. If you look at the teeth, it's pretty much white. It's pretty much good, right? But if you look at the corners, it has got that yellow outline to it and we need to remove just that, just that yellow outline. Now there are tons of method to whiten teeth in Photoshop and I have a complete dedicated video just on whitening teeth. So you can go ahead and check that out for other methods. But here I'm gonna talk about my favorite method. So all you have to do, go to the adjustment layers, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. And we will target just this color. How to target that? Click on the hand icon and just click on one of those yellows and fine. It shows us reds because it's close to reds, but we're gonna modify that. Take the hue all the way to the left or right just for identification purposes. Increase the saturation. This is also just for identification purposes. Make this narrow by holding the end sliders and make it very narrow just like that. The top bar is the whole color spectrum of the image. The bottom bar is the result. Right now we are targeting the reds of the image. Okay, look at the bottom slider. We have changed the hue and as we change it, this area is changing. This is actually the result bar. The top bar is the actual color spectrum of the image and the bottom bar is the result, is what we do. All right, so increase the hue and just move this. Make it very narrow and move this. You see, at this point, this outline is affected very nicely, okay? We are targeting just the outline. Of course, along with the outline, other colors match with that, but we can mask that out later. So now let's increase it to the point where all of this is selected. And the outside slider is just like feather. So increase it, it makes the transition smooth, okay? Do it with the left side. Don't go too much. We don't wanna select the gums over there. This much is fine, you can make it even more narrow. And there you go, bring everything back to normal, zero, and this one to zero as well. Next, what you can do, you can try decreasing the saturation, and boom, it's taken care of. Also, what you can do, you can play with the hue, make it reddish, make it a little reddish, decrease the saturation. Probably if you want, you can also increase the lightness, and it is taken care of. Let's play with that even more, and have a look at the before and after, so this is the before, this is the after. This area is taken care of, but along with that, her skin is also affected. So we need to mask it out. So how to mask it out? Select the mask. It's already there because adjustment layers always come with a mask. Press Control or Command I. And then take the brush. Make sure the foreground color is white. What is the concept of mask? Black conceals, white reveals. So wherever there is white, this effect will show up. So take the brush, make it a little smaller just like that. 
and just paint on the outline with white. Make sure the opacity and flow is at 100. Just like that. And you don't have to be super careful about the edges and stuff because we have already targeted it. Just that color. Like so and bingo. You're pretty much done. Have a look at the overall before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. Let's zoom in quite a bit and have a clearer look. So this is, of course, the after and this is the before after makes a drastic difference. Now, sometimes you might have to combine with this dodging and burning and probably cloning, but not all the time. In this example, as you can see, we don't require it much. But if you have a closer look, let's zoom out and have a look at it. This teeth, it looks like it kind of bumps out of the mouth. Uh, I don't know how to put it, but you get the idea. It kind of standing out looks like a rabbit. So we need to correct that. Why is it happening? It is happening because there's a shadow over here which makes it appear as if it's bumping out. So what we need to do, we need to go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Let's go ahead and increase the brightness. Click on the middle, just take it up like that and select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I and zoom in and you know what to do. Just take the brush and with white paint on the shadow. This time decrease the flow to somewhere around 5% and slowly and gradually, probably I'll go with three and paint on this particular area like that with white okay get the shadow out of the way that looks a lot better I don't know whether you can see the difference or not but you will see once we are done with it okay we painted a little extra over there press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and this time increase the flow to 100 and just Take away this particular area and that's pretty much fine. Now, if you have a look at it, let's zoom out. Before, it looks like bumping out. After, that looks wonderful. Now you can go ahead and decrease the opacity of this one if you think it's too much. Just like that. Sometimes somewhere around 54 is right. And uh, there you have it. There you have done it. Before, after, before, after. See the difference? So these little things can be taken care of. Have a look at this example. If we zoom in, have a look at his teeth. It does require a little bit of liquify, but apart from that, it also requires cloning. If you look at this teeth, it has a little bit broken edge. So let's fix it. How to fix it? Create a new layer, simple. Select the clone stamp tool, this one, and zoom in quite a bit. Just sample this area, zoom in even more. Sample this area by holding the Alt or Option. Click on this area and we're going to place this area over there. But if you make the brush a little bigger, have a look at the overlay. It's not kind of matching. So how do we match it? We need to rotate it. How do we rotate it? Just hold the Alt or Option along with Shift and the arrow bracket keys. The shortcut is on the screen. So the right arrow bracket key will move it clockwise, the left one anti-clockwise. So if you just hold on, Alt or Option, Shift, the right arrow bracket key. See it moves, rotates actually, and that kind of fits. Let's rotate it to the left a bit and just paint it once over there. And this one is fixed before, after. So that's all you need to know about retouching teeth in Photoshop. And there are just two things to keep in mind, shaping and coloring. And that's all. And when it comes to shaping, you can use Liquify, you can use the Clone Stamp tool, you can use anything you want, the Patch tool, whatever is your favorite. But the concept is, you need to get the teeth in the right shape. After you do that, coloring. So it's not just yellow, it's not limited to just yellow. Even if there's any other color cast like blue or say purple, you can also remove that. How to remove that? There are a variety of ways of doing the same. You can check out this video for whitening teeth, but hue saturation adjustment layer can remove almost everything. Everything, not almost, actually everything. You can also brighten teeth by increasing the lightness slider inside of hue saturation adjustment layer after targeting the color of the teeth. And that's pretty much it. And do not brighten it so much that it looks fake. <laughs> Keep that in mind. And when you do apply liquify, there's one more thing. Always remember to press the reconstruct button and decrease it if it's too much. Okay. And then hit OK. You can also go ahead and convert that into a smart object in case you want, if you want to change the values 
later. And that's all. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss anything. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for making Pixel Perfect free for everybody forever and making this episode possible. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.